Welcome, everyone, to the uh, November 8, 2017, Whittier Regional Vogue Technical High School School Committee meeting. Would you all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, public comment. Is there any public comment tonight? None being heard. We'll move on. New staff introductions. Mr. Laganis. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, the rest of the school committee members. It's my honor to stand here as the principal and introduce the new staff members to our team. We have a few of them here, so we'll line them all up. Michelle Katina, guidance counselor, come on up. Re Rebecca Cronus, math teacher. Gilbert De Silva, plumbing instructor. <laughs> Stephanie Hatchell, history instructor. <laughs> Courtney Moreau, math instructor. <laughs> Matthew Palmer, vocational aide. Rachel Rossi, Guidance Counselor. <laughs> Catherine Stoughton, English Teacher. <laughs> Kim Valente, Bus Driver. Like Chris LaCroix, History Instructor. Sarah Anderson, special ed teacher. <laughs> Joe Young, electrical instructor. All right, Joe. Welcome. Welcome to the team, everyone. Welcome. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. It's a really good looking crew. <laughs> Thank you. And everybody's smiling. I love it. <laughs> Uh, Miss Superintendent, is this one of the us. largest groups we've had in a number of years? In a couple of years, yeah. We used to see in four or five, not a dozen. That's awesome. Well, welcome to the team, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> after, that, after that, no, we'll go home. I don't have any of them. I know a few of them. Did they get something to eat? Yes, they did. They you. did? Yes. Okay. All of them? Thank you very much. We'd like to thank you. Job. <laughs> 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 How are we doing good? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Oh, okay. We'll see you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I got to jump it over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Lynch, you. would you like me to get security on this guy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, approval of minutes. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Tucker. I move the approval of October 11th, minutes of the regular school committee meeting. Second. Any questions? None being heard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Treasurer's report, Mr. Lesage. Second. Any questions on the Treasurer's report? It's in your packet, or it was uh, emailed out. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Old business. No old business to report at this time. Student representative, Rihanna Jackson. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, and all other committee, me committee members. 
The football team has enjoyed a great season. The team has qualified for the MIAA state playoffs with a 5-2 record. Also, they are, one of, they are one of the highest scoring teams in the state. Coming off a big win this past Sunday, the team... Saturday, sorry. The team is looking forward to tomorrow night's game versus Amesbury High, High School at 6. In addition, both the JV and freshman teams have had good seasons and are looking forward to next season. The cross-country teams ran great at the end of the season. The girls had strong improvements from last year and are looking forward to returning some of their key runners. The boys team won the CAC League meet in the dual meet CAC title. The boys completed their second undefeated season in a row. The volleyball team wraps up its season with its first MIAA tournament appearance since 2014. They lost, but it was a hard-fought game against Melrose High School. The girls ended their season with a record of 9 wins and 10 losses. The seniors from this year will be missed, but next year's team looks promising as well. The boys' soccer team finished their season with a record of 8 wins and 10 losses. The team played a hard-fought match versus Watertown in the first round of the MIAA state tournament last Friday. While some talented seniors are graduating, the team looks strong for the upcoming year. The girls' soccer team had a phenomenal season this year. They won some great games and qualified for the state tournament once again. Their overall record at the end of the season was 7 wins, 7 losses, and 5 ties. Many of the returning players are excited for next season and will take their experiences from state tournament to try to repeat their successes next year. The cheerleaders will continue to support Whittier by cheering at Whittier football games. They have competed in the CAC cheerleading competition and are looking forward to Whittier's Thanksgiving football game versus Greater Lawrence. The Peer to Beer Club is ready to kick off its annual canned food drive for the holidays. The shop or home that collects the most cans will win a breakfast sponsored by the club. Um, this will happen on December 22nd. Machine Tech won last year and proudly displays a plaque in their shop. The canned goods collected will help feed the hungry in our communities. The Key Club has had a few community service events, such as the Haverhill Kiwanis Turkey Drop that was held at Garrison Golf in Haverhill. In addition, many of the Key Club members were also seen helping out at Open House this past Sunday. Also, we recently signed up to work a day at the Sea Festival of Trees in Salisbury and plan on decorating and donating a tree to be raffled off. The chorus is rehearsing for the upcoming winter concert December 14th. The concert is at 7 p.m. and is free for all. They will be performing a variety of repertoire, including ho some holiday favorites. That evening, there will be student and faculty musicians accompanying them on guitar and drums. The Multicultural Club has wrapped up their bracelet fundraiser and are looking forward to the Coats for Kids drive right after Thanksgiving. If any board member would like to donate gently used coats or jackets, adult or children's size, to those in need, there will be a collection box on the third floor in the floor next to the teacher mailroom. And I also have some of the bracelets from Multicultural since I was asked last meeting to bring mm -hmm. some. So I have 20 if anyone would like to oh, buy good. some. What does it look like? Yes, I, um, I can show you. <coughs> so, me I had a on. so it says, we smile in the same language and it's in multiple colors. Those are awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and I am going to take some. <laughs> yeah. Set? yeah. <laughs> uh, any questions for Brianna? Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Nice. Moving on, uh, Superintendent's report. Ms. Lynch. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Tonight, before you, is personnel action for informational purposes. I have hires uh, of a route bus driver, a Title I parent liaison. MCAS retest after school program, mental health professional development instructors, and evening school. I also have a resignation of a special education instructor. Uh, budget update, there is not a budget update at this time. With the MCAS update, Ms. Katrina Jensen, coordinator of data and assessment, will be doing a presentation on MCAS this evening. On Thursday, October 12th, I attended my superintendent mentor meeting. These are consultancies meetings, and we discuss problems of practice, um, and I will be attending another one of those meetings tomorrow. On Wednesday, October 13th, I attended the MAVA Board of Directors meeting. On Thursday, October 19th, we held the General Advisory Board meeting. Teachers were able to meet with their board and discuss current trends in their 22 vocational technical fields Whittier offers. On Friday, October 20th, I attended the North Shore Superintendent Roundtable. There continues to be discussion in Massachusetts with the superintendent's um, group 
on computer science in our schools and whether we need computer science um, to be a, a major um, element of student programming and in schools. On Tuesday, October 24th, I attended the Merrimack Valley Workforce Investment Board meeting. Marina, Sh I'm going to butcher this name, Shagrina Konova, the Assistant Secretary for Program and Performance Management out of the Executive of Labor and Workforce Development, shared what's been going on in the Workforce Skills Cabinet and the Workforce Development Boards in our state. And they're, they're going to regionalize some of those Workforce Investment Boards. On Thursday, October 26th, I hosted the Superintendent Advisory Board meeting. At the meeting, we were able to discuss vocational and academic programming. On Thursday, October 26th, I attended the YWC Annual Tribute to Women Luncheon at DeBarros. I want to thank Elaine Kavakis for putting together a wonderful afternoon. On Friday, October 27th, I attended the Special Education Professional <coughs> Development meeting on mindfulness in schools. Um, Wednesday, November 1st through Friday, November 3rd, I attended the MASC MAS Joint Conference in Hyannis. I want to thank school key members for attending, Dave Irving, Dr. Joanna Testaverde, Elena Gilbert, and Lisa O'Connor for attending. Um, and that is my report for this evening. I have four field trip request <laughs> forms. I have uh, the first one is for the wrestling team. It's the annual wrestling tournament going to defend their title um, at Pelham High School on January 13th. Move to approve. Second. 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 Any questions? Sterling? Yes. We will have the proper paperwork in line. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, on for the first robotics competition, I have a field trip to f request for, for the team to go to the University of New Hampshire in Durham um, on March 29th, 30th, and 31st for a competition. To approve. Second. Second. Questions? We have the proper paperwork in line? We will. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I have the, um, the, electro uh, the electronics robotics team along with machine technology. They'd like to go to Great Bay Community College in Rochester, New Hampshire. Um, and that field trip is planned for January 31st. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Early. Proper paperwork in line. We will. Thank you. And I have that same field trip planned for um, the second week of students on February 7th. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, wait, I have more. <laughs> I have a ski trip planned to Loon Mountain on January 27th um, for the ski team or for the ski club. Is that an overnight or a day? It's just a day trip. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Start early. Do we have um, chaperones that go? Yes. Are they teachers? Or? Yes. We have proper paperwork in line. We will. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and I have another field trip for the ski team on March 3rd to Sunday River in Maine. Is this an overnight? It is not. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Early? We have the proper paperwork in line. We will. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next. You all set? Yep. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tucker, question. Just, just one question of clarification. You were talking about the, the computer science yes. course or curriculum. Mm -hmm. Is that for for programming or repair or what, what does I, that entail? I believe that um, the <coughs> Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents really feels that students should have a stronger knowledge base of computer science. So they're looking at computer science even in the elementary schools up through the high school um, and looking at that as a requirement moving forward. Um, it's really in the beginning stages, so I feel like, you know, I want to let the school committee know that that is the ongoing discussion in the state about computer science. Um, but I believe it's programming, applications. Um, Learning how to interact. With, right. It's not with. just being able to use an iPad. It's, it's a much deeper knowledge than that. Oh, thank you. Yep. There was a lot of talk about need for people for coding. Now, I don't even know what it is, mm -hmm. but is that something we do here or will do? Well, again, that's part of that computer science piece. It is piece. part of that? Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, we have an ap academic update from the coordinator of uh, curriculum and staff, Kelly Fay.
<coughs> Mr. Chairman, yes, while Ms. Faye is approaching the um, pushing the bench, pushing, <laughs> yes, beginning of presentation, I just want to publicly acknowledge that she just finished her doctoral work yep. and she's now Dr. Faye. Oh, oh, you're right. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're welcome. Wow. <laughs> I hurt my leg earlier. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Is anything for me? <laughs> I say I say that to my three-year-old. What's Mama's new name? And he says you couldn't take care of people. All right. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, members of the school committee. I am Dr. Kelly Fay, and I am here to give you my annual academic <laughs> update. I'd like to begin by um, just providing you with the information that across the building in all subject areas, uh, we have professional learning community time, which is grade level department meetings. We are very lucky to be able to provide that to our teachers as not every school can find the time to do that. In addition, we have vertical meetings where the ninth grade <coughs> teachers talk to the 10th grade, the 10th grade talk to the 11th so that we're vertically planning um, during the day. And this year, um, we're very excited that we have begun honors vertical meetings. So all of the honors teachers in grade 9, 10, 11, or 12 are now one day a month during the school day are allotted time to actually sit and talk about the high expectations that they're going to continuously have for our students and instilling the rigor um, that we want our students to have going forward. In all classes, we are literacy. We provide literacy-based instructional practices. And then we have embedded inquiry-based learning experiences. You know, the whole Ben Franklin adage, teach me and I learn, involve me, and I learn how to do it. So by doing the inquiry-based learning experiences, we're providing that hands-on um, information that they get on the vocational side, also in our academic side. And this year, we have a teacher coach. And our teacher coach has been funded through our teacher quality grant, which is called Title IIA. Her primarily, primary role is to work with first and second year teachers. She runs the mentor program. She does meetings after school. She provides them with professional development. In addition to that, she actually works with veteran teachers who are in need of assistance as well. Um, so she's been able to go into classrooms, model, do observations of teachers, give advice. And I have seen her advice being implemented in veteran teachers' classrooms. She also attends and facilitates some professional learning community meetings. So some people are really great and they know what they're doing and they're go-getters and their meetings are really good and they're all on task at all, all times. But there are some people that, that need that help of sharing ideas and topics and lessons and and she provides that time for them and, and helps facilitate that process um, this year we've had many curriculum changes and we're gonna have a few more coming down the pike this summer through grant funded teacher quality we were able to update our curriculum in English math and science based on the new common core standards and the next generation science standards this fall, we started a new math sequence where our grade nine students are beginning with algebra one geometry. In the past, they had straight algebra and then geometry sophomore year. And now we've combined it to be algebra one geometry starting this year. And the next year, they'll actually have algebra two slash geometry. So by doing that, they're actually getting an additional math class over the course of their four years. And we're also then preparing them for college and career readiness. 
preparing them to be ready for when they reach their physics classes or if they're in the engineering program and um, making them get higher levels on the MCAS exam. In the spring of 2018, this coming spring, we're actually going to be starting our second college class for English. Currently in last year, we offered Comp 101 through Northern Essex Community College, also called the Early College Pro High School Program, where a professor from Northern <coughs> Essex will come over and co-teach with our senior English teacher, and the students within that class received college credits. This year, we're actually able to provide two courses. So in the fall right now, we're offering Comp 101, and then in the spring, we're gonna offer Comp 102. So our students are going to leave with two college courses, the students that are in that class, and it's part of the, what they call the mass transfer block. So any Massachusetts college or university will accept these credits. So it's a tuition savings for those students and their families. It's, it's wonderful. And then, this school year, we are aligning our science to start a new program for biology to be in one year, the freshman year. Currently, we have biology one freshman year, biology two sophomore year. We're going to transition to biology straight in the freshman year by providing them more hands-on inquiry-based learning experiences, more laboratory time, and... Um, in, in continuing, and again, we'll be able to provide them just like mathematics, we're actually going to be able to give them an additional science class before they leave high school. Um, we are in the process of exploring AP and advanced placement. So here's a timeline so far on what we've been doing. Um, in the spring, we surveyed other vocational schools to find out who offered advanced placement and what they offered, how they did it program-wise. Um, this summer, we explored different advanced placement options, what types of courses we could do. Currently, we are looking at grant-funded opportunities to explore. Through our engineering program, we have Project Lead the Way, that's the PLTW, and they have a specific program called AP plus PLTW. So we're looking at that. There is a grant coming out. I actually have a webinar tomorrow on Project Lead the Way, a grant specifically for that. So I'm hoping that some of that funding can be used to do that exploration. And then we also want to look to see how AP complements our early college high school program. We surveyed colleges, typical colleges that our students were going to, to see how the admissions people essentially felt. Do you favor AP? Do you favor the early college program? So we want to be able to provide <coughs> our students with as many opportunities possible and what's best for them. And what's also exciting is that we have currently subscriptions to AP. APEX, which actually stood for, and when it began, it was called AP Excellence. And we currently have two seats for AP courses. So if we had a student that would be interested in taking AP right now, we are able to offer virtually AP classes for those kids. The last thing I'm going to talk about is our professional development. Last year, at the end of the year, Maureen, Superintendent Lynch, kicked off a growth mindset initiative, and it has been embraced <coughs> throughout the school. What we first did is, at her closing speech for the end of the school year, she informed the staff that through a grant, we were able to purchase electronic versions of the book, The Growth Mindset Coach. Um, a month-by-month -month guide to empower students to achieve. So we were twofold. Here we were doing the growth mindset, but we gave every teacher an electronic version to read on their iPad or their computer. So we're, we were having them embrace the technology that we want our students to embrace. And it, it's pheno gone over phenomenally. What I have right here are two posters that our design and visual and graphics students made we found a picture of just two heads that had what a growth mindset was and what a fixed mindset. And essentially a growth mindset is pushing forward, someone who believes they can always achieve, they can keep going. If they have the fix, they say, oh, I can't do this, I'm not good at it, I won't ever be successful. And research shows that <coughs> you can. your, your brain can grow. So uh, these are our actual kids. They took pictures of themselves and made posters. Mm -hmm 
And then they did research on what a growth mindset was and a fixed mindset. So you'll see these throughout the building. You'll also just walk into classrooms and see posters about growth mindset. So it's very exciting. Prior to the beginning of school, we had a training for the leadership team, all department heads and administrators on the growth mindset, what it was, how to instill it within our staff and students. And then we were very lucky on our first day to get Ron Suskind. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning Academy nominated movie person, I guess, actor. It was a documentary. He came here and, and kicked off our school year. Um, and that was kind of, again, his. it's all about his life, his son who had autism and how he was able to discover to communicate with him through Disney movies. So he has the movie in the book, Life Animated. And that was, again, you know, really pushing forward the growth mindset initiative. From here, we haven't given up. We have Mindset Monday. So we haven't done the one hit wonder, read the book, and then we're never going to talk about it again. Every Daily Notice has every Monday a different quote, something about growth mindset. We try to put a little video, a movie clip, something to get the kids and the teachers thinking about it. And then we also have a website for teachers where we post every Monday a different article about growth mindset in their teaching and how to continue to instill that within their classes. And then here I've just ended with a quote from the book that all the teachers had, and that you should always remember to embrace challenges, failures, and mistakes, not fear them. We want you and others to see that with patience, effort, and time, it's possible to achieve success in any realm of study. And that is all that I have for tonight. Awesome. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful. Are there any questions for Dr. Well, Fay? I just want to say that it's very ambitious and very satisfying to hear that you you're so busy. <laughs> Thanks. And I, and think tired, shows, right? I think it shows in the in the school that, that you're exciting the students and the staff at the same time. So thank you. Anyone else? Very cool, Doug. That's awesome. <laughs> I have one a yes. question. Yes. Um, would it be possible the second half of the year if we could get an update on some of these things, like the new math course and the and the science curriculum, just to see how it's going? If sure. Superintendent Lynch wants that, we can do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else? Thank you, Dr. All Frank. right. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. Uh, we have an MCAS and accountability with coordinator of data assessment, Katrina yeah, Jensen. And essays. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, and school committee members. I am Katrina Jensen, and I'm your coordinator of data and assessment. And I have the distinct honor of reviewing our MCAS results and MCAS accountability tonight. We are a level one school. Your tech is level one. Yes, and as you can tell, compared to the state, our dropout rate and graduation rate far exceed the state averages. Just a question on the level one. Did I see a memo sometime recently that the state was eliminating level one designations going forward? <coughs> so um, for middle schools and um, elementary schools, they did not give levels out this okay. year That's because nice. they changed the test. Okay. So they were held harmless this year. So but high, high schools school all got leveled. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. English language arts, 100% passed again for the second year in a row. Mm -hmm. And 95% of the students did so at the advanced or proficient level. Mm -hmm. This is an increase of 2% from the previous year. It's amazing. It's amazing. It is. Here's how we compare to the state with our subgroups, and as you can tell, all of our subgroups are well above the state average. Here's how our students compared from where they came from seventh grade to 10th grade. And I'd just like to highlight on this slide that our advanced percentage increased 27.9% from where the kids were in seventh grade. Next we go to math. 
And this is the area we had our greatest gains. 97.9% um, passed with 85% passing at advanced or proficient. And this was a 5% increase from the previous year. And once again, all of the subgroups are well above the state average. And again, here I'd like to highlight that 38.9% increase in the advanced category from when they took it in 8th grade to 10th grade. And science and technology, we had a 94.4% pass rate with 79% getting advanced to proficient. And this is a 3% increase from the previous year. And once again, all of our subgroups are above the state average. I, I had a question. <coughs> on, on English, you can get um, 7th to 10th grade, but on math was 8th to 10th grade? So in the 8th grade, the English test does not have a long composition, okay. but the 10th grade does. So I use the 7th grade test because that's actually comparable, because the 8th grade test doesn't have that piece. And again, in science and technology, I just want to highlight the increase in advanced, 27.6% from 8th to 10th grade. <coughs> and where do the students stand now? The senior class is 100% MCAS passed. <laughs> and the juniors are 95.2% passed. And that's it. Those are great any numbers. Questions? Are there any questions? Mr. Tucker. Um, in the past, they've had this um, improvement um, formula where if you, they, they expect if you did 95% this year, they want 96 next year, 97 the year. Now, if we're already at 99.5% in something, whether it's attendance or whatever, are they, and then the next year we get 99.4%. Do they look at that as a is a decrease and we're not doing as well? So um, they use that. That's how they get the levels for the high schools. That's how they get level one. So this is actually the last year for the current formula. Um, when they take the test in the spring, they don't have a, a definite of what they're going to do, whether they're going to keep with the current system or if they're going to change it because the test is changing um, in a, a year from the spring. So, but yet yeah, you're right. I mean, that there are schools that are, you know, when you reach the top, where else can you go? Exactly. Mm. That, yes. was, my, that yes. was what I was wondering. Yes. Mr. Early? Many years, 100%, which is very great. How do we sustain that? A lot of hard work um, from everyone in the building, mm. the adults as well as the kids. Um, a lot of people are working with these students to keep them from getting discouraged, um, keeping them motivated to this is for you. We want you to qualify for your high school diploma and not a certificate of attendance. A lot of people put in extra time with these students. Um, the school pays the staff to work with them. They want to work with these students, and the students do their part. They attend. They come after school. They're here in the summer with us. They come out of their vocational area, even as upperclassmen, to make sure that they are working towards the school. How does this work playing sports and not passing the MCAS? So um, the, the coaches are, and the club advisors are wonderful. Our after-school program goes till 3 o'clock. So the coaches know we have a list. You know, like right now, we only have um, eight kids taking the math test next week. So they've been after school. So if any of them were either student athletes or they were a part of a club, we just work with the coaches and club advisors to say they can get there at 310. They really need to do this. And it's a priority for the coach and club advisors as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very Thank impressive. You. Thank you. Technology update. Director of Technology and Information Systems, Mr. Kevin Williams. <coughs> Just one moment, please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, members of the school committee. 
I am Kevin Williams. I'm the Director of Technology and Information Systems here. And uh, I just happened to look at the calendar two days ago, marked uh, I'm now into my eighth year here at Radio Tech. And so I'm very proud and happy to say that. Um, my anniversary was two days ago, apparently. Didn't even <laughs> went by. Nobody gave me a cake or anything. That's not <laughs> enough with that. <laughs> Next year they will. <laughs> um, you I get to 10. Uh, hopefully this year my update will be brief. I'm going to focus on some different things than usually I do in the past. My first two topics are a little bit more on the soft side of things, community engagement and recruitment. And then my last little bit will be on the more traditional IT technical sort of things. So first, um, one of the main things we did that uh, just got released into the wild about a month ago was our new website. Uh, Ms. Lynch in the spring uh, challenged me to... Uh, see what I could do with our website. While it was functional and useful, it was a bit dry. Um, and we really wanted to bring out what makes Whittier special. We wanted it to really be a tool that went forward that it spoke to our prospective um, families, as well as be useful for those who are already here. So um, after talking with some outside resources, um, we really started to think about um, Maybe we could do this ourselves, because who knows us better than us? Um, so with some inspiration and talk with the team of folks here, including Mr. Paselli, Mr. Pigeon, Mr. Trainer, Ms. Lawton, and myself, we started banding about ideas and designs and came out with um, seven designs that never saw the light of day. Um, and on the eighth try, you know, is, is that the phrase? You know, the eighth try is the one. Um, we think we hit across a blend that really presented to the public what it means to come to Whittier, as well as being still useful for that information that our families go to all the time. I'd love for you to guess what the most common pages over the past five years on all versions of our website has been. The lunch menu. <laughs> it gets more hits every week for the past five years than anything else on our website. So we had that challenge of how do we bring in and make this a marketing sort of tool to go for new families and yet still provide that sort of information quickly to our existing families who look for it every week. What's to eat? So I'm not sure if everybody has seen all of this. So if you indulge me, I'll give you a quick overview. This is the landing page of our new website. And right away, it speaks to what's important to us and what we feel about Whittier. We are not ordinary. We're extraordinary. You know, it's visually um, engaging, and it really just sets that tone to say, <coughs> you want something more than just a regular old high school education? Come see us. The other kind of inside joke that's on this page is in the quotes, the phrase, the Whittier way. For years in our meetings, we would kind of half joke about, oh, that's just the Whittier way. And when we're describing some way of something that we've done or not done or some happenstance. And we kind of said, we can turn that on our ears. The Whittier way is what makes us so successful. Why can't we talk about that to the public and not just kind of half talk about it in our meetings inside the building? So it's a hub for everything that's Whittier, whether it's the high school, the night school, our new foundation website that allows you to donate right online, donate please, um, right to our thing, <laughs> or to learn more or apply now through our new online admissions system that I think Ms. Lowell showed last month. Um, but any of those things, learn more especially or um, apply now, brings you to this landing page, the Whittier way. And if you'll indulge me for the first sentence, the Whittier way is a belief that high school is more than just a diploma. We believe that students need more than just a piece of paper after four years. They need skills and knowledge to be college and career ready. We use this page <clears throat> to really highlight the things that make Whittier special. And through these three categories of performance, college success, and workforce excellence, try to address directly some of the myths and maybe misinformation that gets bandied about out in the public, whether it's about Whittier or vocational education in general, really to highlight these are the things we do, and these are the facts behind that. Over time, each one of those categories will be have <coughs> more and more stories related upon those three categories that allow people to dig in deep to say, oh, what about performance? Right now, we talk about some of our outcomes versus state benchmarks. We'll be adding more things now that we have a great, fantastic new story of level one again. And we'll continue to do that, whether it's college success 
or workforce excellence, because we feel that we need to prepare our students for all of these things. As you scroll through easily, you can see lots of information and lots of apply now buttons everywhere um, to get people into our new online access uh, for that. But in terms of the everyday, when you go to the high school home, what you see is a high school website. The information you need, the apply now <laughs> button is there too, but there's your lunch menu, there's your bus routes, there's your athletic schedule, here's our latest news, here's all the things that a student of current or prospective students might want to see, our pathways, our services, all the things that make Whittier special. So, on top of that, along with that, we greatly have expanded our presence and social media and online presence. <clears throat> As the father of Wayne Gretzky said, you don't skate to where the puck was, you skate to where it's going. Pew Research Center, 70% of adults in America use social media more than once a day. And for the demographic that includes ages of parents that would be, have children around that age, that number moves up to 80%. We've taken a strong stance of trying to get our message out to the places where the eyeballs are. That's Facebook, Twitter, and even now Instagram as we go forward. We've expanded our reach greatly on those things. Every news story that hits our website goes immediately to Facebook and um, Twitter. Um, we've even experimented over the past six months with buying Facebook ads for some of our events, and they've been wildly successful. For a little money, we're able to directly target demographic groups that we want to attend, whether it's STEM camps, summer camps, or even open house, and get verifiable information back on the number of eyeballs reached, the number of clicks, all those things. And the value is just off the charts. For pennies a click, we have get hundreds of direct interactions with it. We get the stats in the tens, 15,000 views of folks that see some of this material. Again, drives people to the source of the information, us. All right. Um, so we do that. We have a number of Twitter uh, accounts, not just for the school, but we have some of our folks like Ms. Lynch and our assistant principals, and they're fantastic. Our assistant principals out through the building all the time, seeing the great things our students do. They stop, they take a picture, they write a sentence or two, they post it up to, face to, to um, Twitter. Really just engaging and showing folks what happens at Whittier on a day-to-day -day basis. Really, and the follows and the, the folks that we have going there. Our Instagram account we started a week ago as a lead up to open house. It went from zero to 100 followers in seven days. With almost no advertising, but a post on Facebook. It's amazing. Um, and that's where people are. And so we need to go where they are to get our message to them so that they come to us. Lastly, more of the technical piece of it, and instructional technology. We're in a four-year cycle. This year, we're replacing hardware, <laughs> desktops, laptops. Um, the one thing that's really uh, been uh, the most exciting has been the replacement of the teacher iPads with the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. They all love their iPads, but if you use the regular iPad with a stylus, it's kind of like using a crayon. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of chunky and hard. With the new iPad Pros and the Apple Pencils, what you get instead is an experience that's much more like writing instantly on the board. You can circle, you can laser point. And the great thing is it's a virtual whiteboard that lets them write and write and write. And when they're done, they hit a couple of buttons and they share everything that they've just written to display on that board out with their students. Um, it's been a huge boon. Everyone who has gotten one of these just loves it to pieces. I was going to give you a demonstration, but the fact is I've been running this demonstration the whole time. I've done this whole presentation from my iPad Pro with my fingers and my pencil and jumping around. And more interestingly, I've been recording everything that I've done on this iPad for Mr. Pacelli so that when he does the school committee video, he's able to capture all the interactions I did. So you imagine a teacher can record a small snippet lesson or something with all, with or without her voice, optional, record everything using whatever app she wants on her iPad and can send that to the students to be able to watch before class, during class, as a review after class, for other teachers, for professional development, anything and everything you could think about. It's been a really great tool that we've uh, really embraced and really has taken that use of the iPad on the teacher level to the next level. So that's all I have for my prepared stuff, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Oh. Mr. Tucker. I'm very impressed. 
Um, no, the, the teachers have this. Does this mean that next year or the year after the students may uh, join the club? And Currently, um, we don't think that the students really will benefit as much from the uh, Apple Pencil, and the cost is a little prohibitive. They're much more expensive than the standard iPad. The technology changes. Prices change. Apple might determine that, you know what, they'll bring these technologies down the line as they go, and that may be an option. I wish I could read the tea leaves because then I could read the stock market, but just don't know right now. But they, they still have an opportunity to write, like with the English composition, you're, you're still writing in longhand. And the skills that they need when they, when, as Ms. Jensen was talking about, the MCAS changing, that test becomes online. One of the big reasons they have these devices is to practice that typing skill because that is how they're going to take their MCAS. And so being able to use that preparation now is going to be a huge boon for them when that test becomes online for our 10th graders and it counts. Do you see handwriting becoming uh, old school? That's, that's not for me to determine. That's, 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 <laughs> I, I can tell you that cursive isn't taught in elementary schools because that's where one of my kids is and that, that's, that's not something. He had to teach himself how to sign his name. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank Very you. impressive. Thank you. Mr. Early. A couple things. What does me I think you see it every time we come and talk to you, whether it's us or the things that the students you know, do. What makes it special? Put it on Twitter or Facebook. What makes it special that we do there? I think, again, we have such a great story. We need to get that story out mm. where people can see it. Nowadays, where people see it is there. You know? And I think we're doing a very good job at promoting that message and getting it to the eyeballs so people can see it, so they know what a fantastic place, and not just hearsay and third party and everything else, but directly from us. I personally agree with that. However, social media is basically the way, the way it's happening. Um, is, you know, we have no control over it. However, they still have to add, subtract, multiply, and divide the kids. You know? And I believe they're getting away from a lot of that because they think going to social media, in my opinion now, Going to social media is going to help them add, subtract, multiply, and divide, which I don't believe it's happening. No. It's, a, it's, it's an argument that could be out there, but we could be here all night with I, that I one. I think it's important to know that the kids aren't using social media right. here at we the are. school. The adults are using I, social I media to get the message out about Whittier Tech. So there is still yep. mathematics going on in um, math classes, um, but they're using their iPad instead of a calculator. It's a very interesting thing because Sunday at the open house, I went to one of the seminars, and they have to work twice as hard because they've got less time in the shop versus less time, you know, in their classes. And that's an amazing thing on how they were able to do that. Um, it's hard to even visualize it, and I think you do a great job on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions? I had a question. Yep. Um, what happens with the, you know, the, if the MacBooks are replaced every four years, the iPads. Mm -hmm. What happens to the ones, I mean, do we, are we renting them or what happens to them? So we do, uh, we do lease to own them. Um, after four years, a MacBook, it, you're at the end of it. Um, we do find ones that are in halfway decent shape, and we're able to do some things to refurb them, to bring them back into areas that don't necessarily have a device. So for example, some of the shop areas, they don't have the dedicated space to set up a computer lab to put four desktops down so they can do OSHA for 10 hours and then never do it again for the semester. I can take some old MacBooks, do a little bit of refurb, the instructor can stack them away in a closet until he needs them, they use them, they go back. Many of them after four or five years there's not much left to do much with to begin with, but we find creative ways to use them when we can. We recycle them when we have to. And moving forward with the MCAS, the new generation, um, are, the, are the students going to be taking them on their, their iPads? Yeah, the current plan is they will take them on the iPads. It's a supported device, and it's a device that they're familiar with. We have plug-in keyboards. Every English class in the building has a set of 25 of those keyboards, so the kids are already practicing those skills that they'll need to go through that. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? No. Um, Kevin, I'm not sure this is a question for you, but how many years have we got before the new MCAS-2 that's hitting the elementary schools, 
the fre right now they say this year's freshmen will take it next year. That's what they say. Now they haven't given us a lot of uh, faith that that's actually going to hit, but that's what the documentation right now says. As I said, it has to come through the elementary grades before it comes here. So. <sighs> Right now, we don't have a lot of materials and info. I can, we all have the app, but it only shows practice things up to eighth grade, yeah. even today. Yeah. So your guess is as good as mine. Okay. Dr. Testerary. Uh, Kevin, in regard to keyboarding skills, obviously, the kids today haven't been taught how to do proper, this is old-fashioned stuff, proper typing, that you use certain letters, uh, fingers to do letters, etc., to be quick and to be accurate, etc. cetera. Um, how is that going to have an impact on them taking the tests if they have to write compositions and be timed, et cetera, when they don't have those skills? Mm, it's a challenge across the state, for sure. What we do know is that, luckily, because that mandate's gone through K through 8 already, a lot of the K through 8 has started to address that early on. So as those students move up, they at least have some rudimentary knowledge. I can tell you that you're right. Some kids much prefer to use that glass, and they can go way faster than I can. I'm a computer guy. I can't touch type. I use like six and a half fingers, but I can still type it about 65 words a minute if I'm going. So they seem to make do, but it is a challenge. But again, I think that build up through the K through 8 program, those schools are addressing that because they have to do it as well we'll hopefully we'll reap some of the benefit of that. No questions? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Principal's update, Mr. Laganis. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, the rest of the school committee members. Um, as we know that open host was held November 5th last Sunday from one to four is very well attended. Uh, there were many interactive activities, staff presentations, and live classrooms. Also, the shop areas had interactive demonstrations, uh, which included interactive childcare activities, cosmetology performed manicures, and machine tech gave out dog tags to, uh, to get engraved down in the shop. Uh, the middle school tours have started. Uh, this past Tuesday, we had Ipswich come in. Uh, and tomorrow, uh, Haverhill Constantino is coming in. The first quarter is over. Report cards are, are going to be issued tomorrow. Uh, and parents' night, and if you put in your calendars, parents' night, November 16th from 6 to 8, uh, parents will, have, will be able to have a brief meeting with their child's academic and vocational teacher that night. Also, uh, parent night from 5 to 6, there will be a grade 9 information session about choosing the te their technical program. Uh, we want parents to discuss with their children about possible choices. At the same time, uh, we have the hidden in plain sight presentation, which is the stage room, which will be down in, health, in the health room in 2126 from 5 p.m. till close. Roxanne Grover and Katie Parsons, the above the influence, Coordinators will be there till eight answering questions, and that was the stage room uh, above the influence in uh, deterring, uh, you know, students from uh, drugs and alcohol. And it's mainly it's it's all for the parents. Um, the Booster Club continues their ongoing efforts to raise funds for the students, uh, and just putting out a pitch for the Booster Club. Uh, don't forget to order a pie or two from the Man Orchard Pie Fundraiser. Uh, and that is the 21st, the pies will be delivered here and picked up uh, by the Booster Club. Students will be going to Skills USA uh, this fall at the fall conference, November 19th through November 21st. And that's uh, what's going on. Any questions? Questions? Right. Ask a question to, the, to you, to the superintendent. How did the panel work out this year? Um, it, I think it worked out okay. Um, I think we're going to make some adjustments for next year. Learning. Yes. Thank you. What panel? We had a student oh, oh. panel. Yes. Any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Gott. Thank you. Business manager, Kara Cosmos.
Good evening, Mr. Chair, Superintendent Lynch, members of the committee. All I have for you this evening in your packet is the budget calendar that we are proposing for this year. It basically mimics what we have done in the past. We take um, the April School Committee meeting and we work backwards from from the public hearing where you vote the budget, we work backwards so that we put it in line as best as we can with um, how the state releases the numbers. I have not heard any difference in that the state, I, I assume, will be a, a releasing the numbers this January as they usually have. If not, obviously, if we had to make adjustments, we would. But basically, uh, I ask for your approval of the calendar. Take a motion to accept. Second. 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 Any questions? All in favor? <clears throat> Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair. Yes. <laughs> if I could just say before, while we have all the, the staff that have made presentations here tonight, it's all been so encouraging and exciting, and I thank you all so much, and we'll get down to the nitty-gritty stuff, but this stuff has been wonderful, absolutely wonderful, and it, it just makes it all worthwhile. Thank you all very much. Here, here. Great job. Mr. Chair? What are you? Yes, Mr. Early. This goes back <coughs> me, this goes back to the budget time when we presented a budget and we asked questions, why this and why that, and this just shows you we're putting the money in the right place. I believe we are. Yeah. And, uh, the statistics, the numbers. Uh, the enthusiasm, it all shows. And I want to congratulate everybody involved, superintendent all the way down to the cafeteria, because everybody is part of this whole team here. And I talked to a lot of people Sunday, and a lot of enthusiasm. A lot of enthusiasm from the kids that are here, the parents of the kids here, and the potential people coming in. I mean, uh, the kids have a lot of enthusiasm, but the parents also have a big part of this, too. Um, the days are over that we're just going to go to the high school or go to a school to follow where our friends are. The parents are rolling their sleeves up and know that Woody is a serious thing. And I want to commend everybody for that. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, we have no December annual agenda items. Uh, we have a reorganizational meeting date. Mr. Chairman, I moved to suspend the rules for the purpose of setting the date. Believe me, I uh, for the past few years, district agreement says one thing, but the past few years we've been having it the second Monday of uh, April. And uh, because of holidays and other situations, I would uh, I would move that under the suspension, if that's approved, that we go to the, uh, I believe that's the 9th, two nights prior to that open meeting and the school committee meeting. So I would move that as a recommendation. What was that? To move the real New York meeting? Well, I, I I'm suspending the, the rules, spending the rules of the district to set a, a date, Okay. a new date from this, I believe it's from the 2nd to the 9th. Okay. We've done that this past several years. We did it at the end of uh, Superintendent Sarkeesian and then we did it pretty much through uh, uh, Superintendent DeRose's period and I think we have the last couple of years. Okay. So if, I'll second his motion to suspend. Are there any more questions on that or discussion? That's April. Mm -hmm. April. So. April. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Uh, I have a question. If we continue every year to suspend the <laughs> rules of the district, <laughs> why don't we make a a effort or an initiative to ask the uh, districts to allow us to change the date. I mean, I don't think this I would is caution a big deal. you. Against yeah, that. if you open it up, <laughs> if you open it up, they can do anything. Oh, I see. So that's why I'm doing it yearly. Okay. Yeah. Once you open it, an agreement, it, it's everything's open. Oh. And you run it. Why we schedule a meeting in July? <laughs> <laughs> and you never want to vote for it. <laughs> But we schedule it, don't we? But we schedule it. Well, it's on the calendar. Once we open the agreement, we can discuss they, anything any, on any the town can hold you not hostage. Just, not just one item on the agreement. All, ki just, all kinds of grievances now come out. Yeah. Okay, then. <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, subcommittee reports. Executive has not met. I don't believe there's a need for a meeting. Instructional personnel, Dr. Uh, Testimony. 
Yes, we met on the 19th of uh, September, and I think we did discuss some of this in the October meeting, but uh, the uh, minutes of the meeting are included, and again, it was much of the same presentation we've had this evening, which was exceptional and highlighted the positive achievements we're making in growth in the curriculum areas. Move. Are you moving it? Oh, I move to accept the second. Second. second report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Plan operations, Mr. Tucker. Uh, plan operations met this evening. Uh, the two major items we discussed were uh, boiler. We're going from five boilers to four boilers, but they will be more efficient and cost less. It's an, it's an nice. upgrade that we're going through. Um, the second item that we that we discussed was the major project over the summer, which is the machine shop renovation, which which we're all quite proud of. Amazing. Um, there are minutes here for our, a previous meeting uh, that I can move to accept. Okay. Second. <coughs> Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, salary negotiations. We have not met, but we have a meeting coming up November 15th. Uh, there's also, uh, I'd like to make an appointment. Mr. James would like to join the salary negotiations. Sure. Uh, I think uh, just the meeting coming up, that's it. Uh, policy, Mr. Irving? Yep, we have uh, minutes from September 13, uh, minutes um, when we started going over the, the uh, items for the first reading of the new policy. So I'd move that for acceptance. Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 In your uh, agenda tonight, we have under policy, we have the second reading of the policies. And just for the record, I'm going to read them. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you'll get them right. ACE, ADC, BDE, BEDB, DJEFA, GBEA, IHAMA, JLCB, KDB, BBA, BHE, BIA, BIBA, CB, CBD, CBI, CE, CH, CHA, CHC. I move it for the second reading and a final approval. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 And Mr. Chairman, we do have, we have about the same amount that we went through tonight and through the hard work of the superintendent and the uh, superintendent's administrative assistant, which believe me was a lot of work, we went through about a third more. Mm. We had 99 policies to do and w believe me, Whittier was up to date, with my, was very up to date with the policies, but um, MESC went through them again and decided to change some language. There were some references changed, some legal uh, references and cross references. So we we had to go through everything again. So we'll be up front once this gets done in January, hopefully February, for the final reading of the 99 of them. Uh, we've gone through at least a third. We'll have the other uh, third in uh, December, and hopefully the final one either January or February. So I ask you to read them, and if you have questions, that bring it, bring them to the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, meeting dates. We have the salary negotiation November 15th at 6 p.m. And is that here or is it up upstairs? upstairs? Okay. Uh, I don't know if there's any others coming policy, up. Policy, um, if I could, policy yeah. at 530 again on the 13th of December. Oh, okay. I know it's Christmas time, but we've got to try to get through these. Holiday time, I should say. 13th. 13th at 5.30. See if we can get through the next set. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Early. Quick question. Plan operations. Did we just talk about that? Yes, mm -hmm. we did. We approved the minutes. Oh. Do we vote on it? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to abstain because I wasn't here last time. <laughs> Take oh, back his vote. Well, we had we had a. You actually don't have to. We we didn't have a quorum. It was it was an informational meeting only. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, new business. Uh, yeah, we don't have posted, but I like to like to have a, several of us would like to do a, a, a as brief as we can report from the Cape. Okay. So I'm going to pass ask you pass those out. This is just a quickie, uh, like a bookmarker. And passing right up to the administrators also. I think there's enough 
It, it says what Massachusetts has been doing from like 2015 till now as far as math and ELA, English, uh, some of the things that we've, we've been doing in the state. Um, and several people there were from out of state, and they, they mentioned how great, Ma you know, Massachusetts was definitely the leader in education. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it went over and over, and again, we heard that. So anyway, just briefly, we had seven resolutions that we were involved in. About four of those, four to five of those resolutions had to do with foundation uh, budget funding of Chapter 70, uh, the circuit breaker updating it, and also litigation in court for fair uh, funding under the McDuffie Act. Um, we opposed funding of private schools, um, use of federal funds, for instance, the Perkins funds, vocational funds that come into the state of Massachusetts are $50 million. Uh, a good portion of that goes out of the administrative costs to DESE um, in, uh, as far as administrative uh, area. And the most controversial one had to do with, uh, quote unquote, Obamacare or Affordable Care Act. And that's Massachusetts voted to, or MASC, the, the, the uh, school committee across the state, voted to, uh, to keep the Medicaid and reimbursement uh, level up to where it should be. There's, there's some talk about trying to defund that, not necessarily at the national level, but even locally. So those were the big things that passed. But we had a couple of general sessions. Just briefly, I'd like to mention some, and then we can have others talk. Um, we had Dr. Bill Daggett, who was, um, I know the last time we knew about him, he was the uh, head of occupational education in New York State. He now runs the International Center for Leadership and Education. And he told us uh, a lot of things, and he's a futurist. 20 years ago, he told us about, he spoke for an hour and a half and said that I'm going to have the complete notes of what I've just said, plus any questions you've asked, and it's going to be already collated and stapled in the back of the room in seven different languages. And he did it. Mm. They did it. And this is because of technology that we're talking about uh, earlier. He says you've got to continue with the three R's, the traditional uh, information for uh, education, but we have to also have to add college, career, and the common good, which is uh, three more C's. And he also talked about the revolutions that's going on. The first revolution was animal, the steam power. The second talks about factory system. The third, what uh, 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 Mr. Williams was talking about tonight with uh, Web 101, uh, 201, 301, 401 is going to be nanotechnology. And the vocational schools will have to get what another question asked, not just being able to use a computer, but be able to write computer code in this nanotechnology that's coming in the future. Embedding of chips, all of this information, the high technology, is really going to be set for the vocational schools in the next few years. So basically, uh, that's it. He, he does talk a lot about um, social, emotional learning. We had a, a, another general session they made comment on as far as drugs and the opioid crisis. Dr. John Kelly from Mass General came in and spoke about the problem with op opioids and the other drugs that are going on today. And, and, and I'd just like to say, it really is worthwhile. The educational, you know, I mean, not every little panel is going to be the best, but the general sessions and basically the overview that the Massachusetts Association of School Committees and the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents, they put on one hell of a seminar. Yes, and I would say, I'm not sure, Elena, you might say, I, probably close to 800 to 1,000. I think it's one of the biggest ones they've had. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is, and it, it's getting this information out. The idea of, of teaching the total child to, again, not just the three R's, but the emotional background, the mindsetfulness, et cetera, that we talked about, the doctor talked about, and so on. So, um, Joanna and Elena. And um, Lisa came. Mm -hmm. um, I reiterate what David said. It is a wonderful experience, and it's good for all of the people who can go and expand their knowledge of what's up and coming and where we need to go. Uh, most of the materials that uh, the sessions that I went to along with the general sessions that David attended were on uh, social emotional growth. Um, what's happening today to our children, the amount of stress, uh, watching young people today uh, apply for college. Um, the kids are have the, they're developing ticks and and they're crying. Young boys that that young our young teenage boys who were always considered to be you know these macho guys now come home after school crying about college and what's going to happen to them. The stress in America's teenagers today is phenomenal, and uh, so uh, I attended two or three sessions on emotional health and how important it is, and I think we're working on that in our mindfulness and our uh, positive thinking programs here, so that's an important part of today's educational programs. I have a question, Doctor. What are they talk were they talking about uh, the financial stress 
on these kids going into college? Everything. 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 <laughs> uh, Jack. Um, it's the pressure to take the test. Am I going to, and, and the kids getting into college. College is, when I went to school, places that we thought were just, oh, that's just a secondary school, or that's your backup school. These places aren't backup schools anymore. Places like Northeastern University or Boston College used to be hard to get into. These places are equivalent and just as hard as any of the <coughs> Ivy League schools to get into. And our kids are saying, and kids from Massachusetts have a, uh, are not given the same uh, consideration because colleges want them from all over the country. And places like Northeastern and BU, et cetera, the big schools in, in Boston, they want them from all over the world. Thank you. So the, the pressure is there on all aspects and financially is phenomenal. That's one of the biggest. Well, they're places like Northeastern BC, BU, 60 to 70 thousand dollars a year all right times four quarter of a million dollars quarter of a million Just, dollars and some some and and parents now are looking for financial aid and working on can, having their kids be, uh, become part of the um sports clubs uh, specialty sports and uh, sports trainers because if they get sports scholarships it helps with yeah. the financial costs but it's a uh, stress all all the way around Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that stress factor. Um, on NPR this morning, there was an article out there, a segment about college admissions. They're saying they get the top tier colleges get thousands and thousands of applications, and for a hundred applications, they'll accept five or six students. Mm -hmm. So the, that I can see what the you're saying about teen, teenage mm -hmm. stress getting younger and younger. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the, the workshop that I enjoyed the most was um, about MCIEA, and I want to tell you it stands for Massachusetts Consortium for Innovative Education Assessment. This is a group that wants to do away with high stakes testing and test the kids on their performance, um, school quality measures, student engagement, student achievement, school environment, performance assessments. Um, and it, and it, it, it just was such, te you know, judging the whole child and not just basing their opinions on one high stakes test to see whether you passed or failed it. It's not looking at everything. And they're talking about what they did what they're working on to um, to do this with the kids, and we're doing it. I mean, listening to you folks tonight was exactly what they're talking about. Um, but the, the drawback to this is a whole bunch of information on it, and I'm not being very, I don't know, can't get it out of my mouth, but um, um, they still have to, the schools that have that have joined into this and the teachers and the students, they still have to do the MCAS. Mm -hmm. So the teachers are trying to juggle both aspects. They're trying to teach them to the test and then trying to bring it back to basics and looking at all kinds of things. And they're doing it and it's, and it's successful. Whether it will go anywhere or not, I don't know, but I found it fascinating. And there was another, there were a lot about opioids, so a lot of, um, a lot of workshops about that, and there was there is a group. Um, it's called Learn to Cope, and it's funded by the um, Department of Mental Health. And they will teach you. They have somebody come into the school, and they're calling this um, opioid addiction a pediatric disease because it's starting so young. Um, so there's just so much. And, and the, the United States has got the biggest, um, the biggest problem. 5% of the world population um, has a problem, and 80 to 90% is here in the United States. So, but it was a wonderful conference, um, a lot of good speakers. Um, 
and I just encourage anybody to go every year. It's it just seems to get better and better. But anyway, um, I went to some different seminars myself. Um, so I have a special education background. So some of the ones I went to was um, different law cases. Um, some of them were special education. Uh, a good one that I did attend was Turning 22, which talked about how schools are responsible, you know, for kids that they can't graduate, but they're responsible until they're age 22. And I was curious to know, um, schools are supposed to have, you know, CPACs, and what the status is of what is CPAC. We have a CPAC. Okay, so parents meet mm -hmm. periodically, and yep. okay. Um, and some of the other things that I sat in were some social emotional support, and um, there was also one that I hit at the end of the day on Friday, which involved um, stress, which can lead to depression, which can eventually lead to possible suicide, um, and how kids just really need to be able to. Um, find people to talk to and discuss, you know, what their stresses are and, you know, if there's depression, how to have that addressed. And, you know, there's always somebody out there. And um, another one that I attended on Friday was Therapy Animals in the Classroom, which also helps to eliminate stress. So that was an interest. It was a fun one. They, 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 they brought cats. dogs in. They had cats oh, in. Had cats. It was interesting. Uh, just one other quick thing. On your behalf, I was asked to go to a... Uh, to meet with a DESE official, and there were about 21, 21 of us across the state today, and basically they were asking, should school committees get involved with uh, um, checking books out and curricula and being involved in curricula? And I cautioned against it, saying, that's leave that to the professional uh, curriculum specialist. You know, you might have some background, or you might not, but school committees should not get involved in, in, in that. As far as maybe having a book come to us, like the instructional activity, uh, they'll recommend a book and we look at it and say, yeah, yeah, it looks good, and, and go ahead. That's fine. That's an appropriate place for a school committee. But to dig our nose in and to start uh, kind of mandating, hey, you'll do this book or not, that's an absolute no. I don't even know why Desi asked the question. I really don't. To me, it's kind of silly. Anyway, that's that's report. Thank you. Mr. James. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody else? Um, I have, I've grabbed a couple of these flyers about um, the opioids in schools. If anybody wants to grab one of these, one of these. Maureen, you, did you get one of these? Thank you, Brianna. So there's a few more here if anybody wants one. Yeah, to district just Attorney, is that the one in the Middlesex County? District um, Attorney? I think it is. Is, it, is that the one? Yep, yeah, I think so. She's pretty good at that. Oh. Yeah. District Attorney. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. No. Once a year. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have questions. Looks like to add. Uh, executive session. We have no executive session. Mr. Oh. Chairman, move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Please, please. At least I oh, shut hey. up plainly. <laughs>